Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Somebody sent me this photograph and it's huge, which is great if we click on it and go to bitmap and resample it. It's only 72 dots print, but we're gonna make it smaller later. This particular picture will not trace. And if you wanna get rid of the background, which I would think you would in this because it's all white and got these white dots, the only way to really do it is to hand trace it, which I don't like doing and I'm not that very good at it. But if you will get your freehand tool and set the smoothest freehand smoothing on 100, you'll be a lot better off. And you're going to want to zoom in. And you don't have to do the most perfect job when you're first starting. You just want to kind of get a, a rough outline of the picture like I'm cutting off some of her head or hair um, just because I'm going fast. And you want to try to do as good as you can around their hair. We're going to not worry about it too much. And like this is why you'd really need to take out the background on this particular picture because his hair is white. And then you can come down here and let's get the... Uh, where we can see the whole picture, just click on that node and join that node. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that item, well, matter of fact, I'm gonna change my nudge factor to like 12, and I'm gonna take this item and I'm gonna nudge it over, still didn't well, and I'm not connected. Um, so just for the video, I'll, I'll just connect it with the freehand tool and we can always change it. You wanna have a well. So now I'm gonna take the Smart Fill tool. It doesn't really matter what color. It doesn't really matter what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and go with RGB. Um, let's go with this blue. I'm gonna fill that in. Now, because I nudged, I can nudge it back over to them. Now I'm gonna select both items and I'm gonna go up here to intersect. And what that did, that intersected that picture out. Now I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to keep my picture just for grins. And what's so cool about this, the picture is still there, even behind the line. So I can grab that and I can delete that node. That's the part where I um, just cross the lines. And let's take this node and kind of make it square and then go around their head and kind of, you know, you can really see it right there. So I'm going to add a node and then add a node right there. And I'm going to bring this in. Matter of fact, I'm going to right click and turn that into a cusp. And by doing that, now I can change just one handle at a time. Matter of fact, it would probably be beneficial if you'd select all your nodes and right click and turn them into a cusp. That way your, own, your handle uh, doesn't really interfere. Now that spot right there has got a little hair in it, but it's got a, some glimmer to it or whatever. So we're, now we're gonna take that node. And you don't want, you know, I don't know uh, particularly what, you know, you're, you wanna do. You wanna keep much of their hair as you can. And that's pretty good. Uh, let's look at the top of his head, see it's, it's kind of hard because those two colors kind of blend in. So we can bring this in, bring this in, and we're almost done. And then I'm going to run it through PhotoGrave, which is a photo um, digitizing type program. And I'm also going to send you or tell you about uh, Jason Ram that uh, if you will email him, he has a power. PowerPoint on how to do this in Corel. Not so much the uh, cutting out. I mean, that's pretty much standard, but now I'm gonna get the smoothing tool and I don't want it very big. I don't want it, well, I need it bigger than that. Let's make it like two inches. And I'm gonna take and, I'm just gonna kind of smooth this out because you don't want those sharp points over here and around his face. And like right there, you wanna kind of Kind of blend it, you're blending it out. And we're done pretty good. So now what we need to do is make the size that the customer 
is going to engrave it on. So with my ratio lock, they said 11, and you see it's 14.23. We can change that, unlock that, and we can make that 14. It squishes it just a little bit, but it's not that big a deal. Now, because we've reduced it, we can go to bitmap, resample, and see now it's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 300 dots per inch, make it a little better. Now, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it on a brand new page, and I'm going to paste it, and see it's it pasted it right where I was at. Now, I'm going to hit P and put it in the center of the page. But I'm going to make my page size like 11 by 14. Whoop. And you kind of need to do that for a couple of reasons. Now, it's in the center of the page. That little bit of shadow is from the Corel page. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to go to bitmap, and I'm going to put a mode, I'm going to put it into grayscale. So it turned the picture into grayscale. Now I'm going to hit P again to make sure it's in the center of the page. And now I'm going to export it. And I'm going to go to export. I want it to be a JPG. I'm just going to call it a photo couple. And I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to come up there and you want the highest quality. Uh, the color really doesn't matter, but I'm going to change it to RGB because they are going to engrave it. And I'm going to say OK. Now I can go to Photograve, which is a great program, and it costs four or five hundred dollars. And uh, Mr. Ram shows you how to do it for free inside of Corel. And we've done tests side by side and uh, they come out pretty equal. So I'm going to open this. Well, one, I don't know where it went, so I'm going to type in photo. There it is right there. It went into the desktop, and I'm going to open it. <clears throat> the person I'm trying to help said that they're going to put on alder, so red alder. Just say OK, because that's going to kind of figure out the digitizing. I'm going to resample it, and you can see it's 11 by 14 and 300 dots per inch, so we're OK. I'm not going to mess around with the interactive mode I have before. I'm going to go final process. And what this is going to do, it's digitizing and make it look like what it's going to be on the altar. And then I'm going to save image, engraved, OK. Going back to desktop, and you can see it's photo couple engraved. And I'm going to say save. Now I'm going to go back to my original <clears throat> picture, and I'm just going to right click and import it. And I'm going to write. Photo. I mean, I've had Photograve for 18 years. Now, I'm just going to click it anywhere. But there's a one thing I don't understand about Photograve is going to add a background. So we need to get rid of that background in just a second. I'm going to go order, and you can see it's got a white box around it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move this. I'm going to change my nudge factor to like 12. I'm going to nudge this out of the way. And I'm going to put a rectangle around it, and I'm going to fill it in with the Smart Fill tool. And then I'm going to go down or over and fill that in. Now I'm going to move it back. And now I'm going to bring this in and put P and put it in the center of the page. Now I'm going to hit P and put that in the center of the page. And I'm going to select both of them. You can see two objects selected. I'm going to go to Intersect. And what that did, it took away the background. So that photo is ready to engrave. <clears throat> now, the way Jason does it, and let's go back to that page where his email is. Um, and I'm uh, kind of going, I haven't asked Jason, but I'm sure he'll send you, or him and his lovely wife will send you the PowerPoint on how to do that. He teach classes in Las Vegas. We just taught a class. Um, well, last week up in Dallas, and he did a great three-hour class on how to do this. But I always suggest, instead of, most everybody's going to have, that's an engraver is going to have alder 
sheets of alder around if you don't use it. Uh, for name tags, it's a great name name tag. <clears throat> but I instead of running a 11 by 14 um, piece of wood, I always su suggest is pick something you really want to really care about. I care about this woman, her nose, her eyes, her teeth, and I'm going to select it. You have to have it selected first, then get your crop tool. Well, first of all, what you want to do is you're going to make a, a duplicate of that. And see, here's what I've already cropped out. So now I'm going to take my crop tool with it selected, and I'm going to go just around her eyes, try to get as small as you can so you're not wasting any wood. So that piece right there is only less than three inches. Run that piece. That's the most important aspect of the, I mean, look at that. Uh, and what that's what it did. It put dots uh, where it needs darkness to lightness. And it's, I don't do a lot of wood. I do most of mine on granite. Uh, Jason does a lot on painted acrylic. Um, and it's, Painted acrylic is pretty cool because it's relatively cheap and it, it's outstanding what he does. And um, anyway, so crop that out. Do that before you waste the whole piece. Anyway, I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.